everybody, welcome back to the Plays and Fades YouTube channel. I'm your co-host, Gordon Gables, joined today by this beauty of a man here, Kiro. And we're back for another UFC slate this weekend, UFC Vegas 50. A pretty fun card, but it is another opportunity to make some money. How are we doing, my friend? Very good. I mean, coming off of a huge card in UFC 272, <laughs> that was an awesome card and a great night for us, for Gordon's bets, for, for our DFS lineups, up 12 units <laughs> officially tracked on the Gordo Gambles Action Network. If you want to get in on those bets, especially for UFC, check out Gordon's videos here on the channel and at, at Current MMA on Twitter and on there will be a link in the bio. So check those out. You don't want to miss out on another huge weekend of making money and uh, we're excited. All right, bringing back the word of the day. The word of the day for this card is violence. There's a lot of violent spots here. A lot of fights that you have to target because on either side, there's so much volatility and it will finish. The problem is, what side? Find out next time. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I say we don't waste any more time. Let's get into these violence maps. Let's start with the very first one. I think you guys know where I'm going with this one. This fight is already minus 600, not to go to decision. We have the return of Alex Pereira facing Bruno Silva. Which side do you like on this one? Yeah, as you said, I mean, this is a fight we expect to finish. On one side, you have an elite, fantastic kickboxer, the only guy to have ever knocked out Adesanya put up a, a good showing in that first UFC fight. Now he's coming into his second one and uh, yeah, on the feet, $8,900, big favorite, but he could definitely get that finish. But on the other side of this, you have Bruno Silva, an absolute killer in his own right. And if Bruno Silva wants to, sitting there at $7,300, he could try to take this fight to the ground. And if he does, we could see him getting an early finish here on the ground just because of that huge advantage. Pereira does not have that much of a ground game, which opens up huge opportunities here for Silva. So we definitely think you should take one of these guys, but it's hard to ignore the value of Silva here at $7,300. His upside is massive. And if he gets that finish, he could almost certainly be in that optimal lineup. If Silva decides to go out there and grapple, he could look minus a thousand this weekend. He has the path to victory. Everybody knows that. Will he implement it? I don't know. There's no such thing as a lock this week because, actually there's no such thing as a lock ever. I don't like that L word. Because of stuff like this, we don't know what his mentality going in. We saw interviews that he didn't say to strike. He shouldn't do that. He has such a big advantage on the ground. If he takes it there, he wins $7,300. I think he does that and scores very, very well. Next violence matchup of the week, we have the short notice replacement, Terrence McKinney going back and facing Drew Doe right now. I know what you guys are thinking. Terrence McKinney, didn't you fight like two weeks ago? Yes, he did. He went out there, absolutely destroyed Fierre's Young in that very first round. He's coming back for round number two here. He's had two fights in the UFC, both of them ending in the first round. And don't forget his regional scene stuff where he also had multiple first round finish. He is the definition of a kill or to be killed fighter. And that is the reason I want some of this fight. Because he's coming in on short notice, because he has that mentality, he's going to go out there and he's going to get a first round finish. And if he cannot get Drew Dober out of there, Drew Dober is going to start him in the later rounds. With the skill set that Terrence McKinney does have, he is able to submit Drew Dober like he did to Ferris Young. A path to victory that has beaten Drew Dober in the past, but let's not discredit the type of guys that Drew Dober has lost to. Mm -hmm. He's an elite guy in the division, there's no passing that. But I do think that Terrence McKinney is going pretty high owned this weekend as a low dog. He's very, very cheap. $7,200, that is a very, very good option for you because his path to victory score is very high. But I think that if you don't take him, maybe Drew Dober is a good contrarian spike this week. Um, I think a lot of hype will be on McKinney. So if you get Dober and he gets that later on finish, I do think he scores very, very well. Yeah. All right. One more violent spot for us this week. The next violence fight is going to be Song Yidong versus Marlon Moraes. What side are we taking on that one? Yeah, obviously this one is another one with a big price discrepancy. Song Yidong up there at $9,200, whereas Marais is down there at $7,000. But we like the side of Song Yidong this week a little bit more than Marais. We've seen that Marais has some, has some issues with his durability, with his chin these days, and has very little cardio. I mean, most of his fighting is going to be done in the first round. After that, he tends to gas out a little bit. And Song Yidong is a lot younger has the power to get that knockout, has the durability advantage, has that cardio advantage. So we could see this being an early finish or after Mariah's gas is out, being a finish then for Song Yudong. On the other hand, you do have to acknowledge the fact that Mariah's is a very, very good fighter. And if he does win, most likely it's gonna be in that first round, which means there could be huge value there at $7,000, but definitely a, a GPP play. Song Yudong is somebody we like a lot in cash or GPP lineups this week. Or play of ours this weekend, sitting at that top end of the price range, along with a guy in the main event in Ankalaya. 
Now, Magomed Nikolai is facing Thiago Santos here in a five round main event, but he's sitting at a price tag of 9.6K. Do we think he lives up to that price tag? Short answer here, yes. I mean, the guy's name is Magomed. He's up here at $9,600. And uh, we think this is going to be a big week for him. I mean, Tiago Santos, a good fighter on the other end, but a huge underdog here in this spot and for good reason. Ankoliev obviously has the ability to take this fight to the ground and to, uh, to beat Santos down for these five rounds. His last couple of wins, we've seen him put up not great scores, 76 and 82 points respectively, but those were over three round fights here. This one's going to be a five rounder, which means if, even if it goes to the decision, that's a ton of control time, a ton of time to, to land some strikes and he could put up a big score even if it goes to that decision. And at the same time, he has, he has the ability on the feet to get this knockout. He's a more accurate striker here than Santos is. So we see him having the advantage kind of in all spots in this fight. So that $9,600 price tag is high and chances are he is a little bit chalky, but we think that he's still a good good pick this week. And it's not like we haven't named a few underdogs to make that price tag more affordable. Uh, we do think that Ankle has a future in the division and he wins pretty handily here. Mm -hmm. But if you need that extra value, let's talk about one more underdog, Damon Delete Jackson. His face Camilo Kirk. Kirk Kirk stepping up on short notice. Not good, because Damon Jackson's a guy who brings the pace. He is another killer to be killed fighter. He brings a frantic pace and we saw it against Charles Rosa. What I like a lot about him is he goes out there and he just, he does what he does best over and over and over again. Cameron Kirk is a guy who succumbed to that pressure before, just like he did to Billy Quarantillo on Dana White Contender Series. I think that this is a good spot for Jackson here. And at a 7.8K price tag, he definitely has some really good upside with those takedowns and that relentless pressure, even to get a late finish on a guy who Kirk, who has been gassed out before. I think at 7.8K, you're getting good value and it allows you to get the guys up top like Son Yu Dong, like Ankaliah, and one of Dober or Pereira, like we talked about earlier. All right, let's mention one last favorite, Azamat Merzakana facing Tafon Nachikli. We are taking Azamat, tell us why. Yeah, I mean, the one concern you might have here with Merzakhanov is that he's a little bit undersized for the division, but just like Ankalai, we think he kind of has the advantage here in this matchup just about everywhere. Um, definitely on the ground, he has the big advantage here over in Chukwi. He has the ability to take him down, but even on the feet, he has that speed, he has that striking accuracy, and uh, we definitely think he wins there too. So another big favorite, $8,800, a little bit closer to the middle, but still up there. But uh, we definitely think the value on that in that fight is on the side of Merzikhanov as opposed to in Chukwi this week. We don't love this matchup for him. We saw Park take down the Chikwi a couple times that third round. That path to victory is definitely there for Azuma. I think if he has to, he will go there. Even on the feet, though, I think that he's able to get this win. $8,800, another winning fighter. Let's so wrap it up with one last fighter in the mid-range here. I'm taking a bit of Carl Roberson. And I know you guys are saying, Gordo, a few videos ago, you said how much you hated this guy. Well, I hate him when he's going up against a grappler. And the thing is, Carl Roberson is a decent offensive grappler with no defensive ground game of his own right. Being been to the likes of Alan Vittori, Glover Teixeira, Cesar Ferreira. Those are four guys who are at the top end of the division who are able to out grapple him. And luckily here, he's facing a guy, Khalil Roundtree, who won't be able to out grapple him. I think that path to victory is there. It is a huge step down if you're considering you were losing to the likes of Teixeira, Alan, etc. Even on the feet, I think that he has a decent ability to keep this close here. And a guy like Roundtree is a guy who's been largely, largely inconsistent it's hard to trust him i think that carl roberson has that pack to victory on the ground if he wants it and, he, and even on the feet he'll have the opportunity to keep it close and win in his own right all right that's gonna do it for us on the plays and fades youtube channel real quick want to round it out we mentioned those three fights at the start yep. dober mckinney Pereira silva and song Dong marias three fights you want one of each side we also mentioned the third place let's round it up a bit first Miranda Maverick, 9.4K, a bit expensive, but I do think she has some decent opportunities to score high up top as well. She has a finishing up so that might, people might overlook because it's a women's fight. I think she might be a bit sneaky in GP formats. Bashrat versus Jones. I think Jones is live here as an underdog. Bashrat hasn't really been tested that much. If he is legit, he scores very, very well, just like he did in the Dana White Contender Series. And last but not least, AJ Fletcher. I think he's also a very, very live dog. Undefeated prospect. He hasn't fought the best level of competition, but this is a real good chance to see where he's at. I'm liking his style here, and I think he will do well. I do not have the same faith in him as I do other people in this price range, just because I haven't seen enough from him. But that's gonna do it for us in the Plays and Fades YouTube channel. If you guys wanna know more, check us out on Twitter, at GamblesGordo, at PlaysFades. Make sure you guys leave a like down below. If you guys wanna check out more about who I'm betting on, I have my video on the current MMA YouTube channel, as well as a live stream with Liam and Phoenix on Friday. So make sure you guys check that out, and let's make some money. Ding.